welcome back to my channel myself sabiha sultana so today we are going to start the second chapter of ninth standard that is medieval india and political transition the political transition here the period between second half of the 12th century and the first half of the 13th century is recognized as the transitional period in the indian history transitional period indicates the preparedness of the society to enter from one era to another era in the medieval period from ancient period the turks broke the political system of small kingdoms and they established a strong centralized power structure monotheism was expanded in the field of religion all these things indicates the beginning of medieval period in india so in this part of the video we will learn about the kings who ruled over north india that is the very first part if we come to north india the very first thing come in our mind is the rajput dynasty the rajput dynasties were ruled by six dynasties that is gurjara pratiharas garhwals paramars solankis chandelas and chauhans so this in this part we are going to learn about all these dynasties so let's get started with this chapter 2 medieval india and political transition Before the study of the empire established by Turks it is necessary to understand the multi-state political system of pre-Turk period the rule of small kings is called as multi-state political system the study of multi-state political system can be started with the study of Rajput dynasty Rajput dynasties that ruled the western and northern India from 9th century to 13th century as mentioned earlier Rajput dynasties was ruled by different small different dynasties after the rule of vardhanas of sthanavineshwara most of the western and the northern india was ruled by gurjara pratiharas chandela of bundelkhand gharwals solankis paramars and many other rajput dynasties by the end of 12th century rajput kings like prithviraj chauhan jaychandra gharwal Parmaradi Deva Chandela were most powerful kings of North India. So, very first we'll learn about Gurjara Pratiharas. The Pratiharas had claimed in many of their inscription that the Lakshmana of Ramayana period, a Shatriya of a Surya Vamsha, as the founding person of their family. But as per the available evidence, Nagabatta is the founder of this dynasty. the pratiharas ruled sindh region by keeping kanuj as their capital they fought back the frequent arabs attack mihira bhoja and mahendra pala the powerful rulers of this dynasty had defeated the palas of bengal and had extended their pratihara kingdom till bengal an arab traveler named suleiman had visited the court of mihira bhoja and had appreciated the kingdom as it had peace pratihara ruled declined during the rule of mahipala who succeeded mahendra pala so this was all about gurjara pratiharas the next dynasty was gharwalas chandra deva the founder of this dynasty ruled north india keeping varanasi as his capital city Govind Chandra is another important ruler of this dynasty. He extended his rule till Malwa and Magadha by defeating Palas. He also defeated the king of Kalinga and Odisha. The ruler of Kashmir, Gujarat and Chola had cordial relationship with Govind Chandra. So the next is Paramaras. Paramaras came to prominence after the decline of Pratiharas. Upendra Krishna Raja the feudatory king of Rashtrakutas founded this dynasty Dharanagar was their capital Bhoja is the most popular king of Paramara dynasty he extended the Paramara state by defeating Kalyana Chalukyas Gangas of Kalinga and Northern Konkans though Bhoja experienced ups and downs in political sphere he remained undefeated in the area of literature he himself was a poet as the kings who came after him were weak the paramara dynasty declined the next dynasty is solankis mula raja first is the founder of this dynasty though 
Bhima I is the most famous king of this dynasty. He could not protect the Somanath temple from Ghazni's invasion. After him, Mool Raja II and Veer Dhawala were capable kings. Mool Raja II defeated Muhammad Ghazni near Mount Abu. During the rule of this dynasty, the famous Jain scholar Hemachandra compiled a Prakrit dictionary, Deshi Mala. Ullaf Khan and Nusrat Khan, the military generals of Alauddin Khilji, defeated Karanadeva and made the kingdom of Solankis as a part of Delhi Sultanate. So with this, the rule of Solankis came to an end. The next dynasty is Chandelas. Dhanga is the most famous king of Chandelas who prospered in Bundelkhand. In the beginning, Chandelas were the feudatory kings of Pratiharas. After the decline of Paramars, Dhanga declared himself independent. He took hold of the eastern part of Paramars kingdom and extended his kingdom by defeating Palas and Adras. Dhanga, who had the title Maharaja Dhiraja, means the kings, king of kings, extended military assistance to Hindu Shahi kings Jayapala to fight back attacking Turks. Finally, due to the infighting and lack of unity among Rajputs, Khilji Sultans conquered this kingdom. So likewise, this kingdom also declined. The next dynasty is Chauhans. The Chauhan dynasty is the most prominent among the Rajputs. The roots of this dynasty is visible during 7th century. The dynasty started its rule in the Ajmer region of Rajasthan. The rulers of this dynasty, Ajay Raja, Vigraha Raja IV and Prithvi Raja III made Chauhans the prominent rulers of the Western India during 12th century. Prithvi Raj Chauhan, known for his bravery, defeated the Chandelas of Pundelkhand, gaining Maheba and Kalinjar. Prithviraj Chauhan defeated Muhammad Ghori at Tarain. Ghori wanted to extend his core kingdom towards Sindh region. Muhammad Ghori, who was severely wounded in this battle, led another attack towards Delhi in the following year. He defeated Prithviraj Chauhan at, again at the Tarain battle, which is considered as the second battle of Tarain the very place of previous battle. Prithviraj is an embodiment of Rajput, Valor and Bravery. So these were the dynasties that ruled North and Western India. Now let's know about the contribution of Rajputs during their reign. The Rajputs who ruled during the last part of the ancient and the early part of medieval period encouraged the art, culture and the religion liberally. Rajput kings themselves were scholars. Kings like Bhoja, Munja have written various literary works. King Munja had poets Padma Gupta and Hala Yuddha in his court. King Bhoja had extended his royal patronage to the Jain scholar. Shanti Sena, Prabhachandra Suri and Ghanapala during his rule. The poetic works like Jaydeva's Gita Govinda, Bharavis Kirtan Arjuna Vijaya, Bharatu Haris Ravanavadha, Mahendra Palas Kavya Mimase were returned during the rule of Rajputs. Dramas like Raja Shekharas Bala Ramayana and Karpura Manjari, Bhava Bhutis Mahavira Charitra and Uttara, Uttara Rama Charita, and historical works like Kalhanas Raja Tarangini. Jainika's Prithviraja Vijaya and Hemachandra's Kumara Palacharita are the important works. Prithviraja Raso by Chand Bardai and Bhoja Prabandha by Ballala are the noted biographies of Rajput rulers. Gujarati, Rajasthani and Hindi languages developed during this period. The educational institution of Nalanda, Kashi, Vikramashila Ujjaini received support from Rajputs. The Rajput kings constructed spacious forts in Chittor, Mandu, Rantambur, Jodhpur and Gwalior in northern India. They built palaces in Jaipur, 
ग्वालियर एंड उदयपुर दिलावारा टेम्पल विमला टेम्पल एंड लूना वसाई टेम्पल वर बिल्ट ऑन माउंट आबू ऑल दीज आर ब्यूटिफुल एंड नोन फॉर द आर्टिस्टिक आर्किटेक्चर द चंडेलास बिल्ट खंदरायास टेम्पल इन खजुराहो शिवा एंड विष्णु टेम्पल्स वर मोस्ट मोर इन द नंबर अमोंग द टेम्पल्स बिल्ट ड्यूरिंग देर रीन दे ऑल्सो एनकरेज पेंटिंग्स The painting style of this period is classified as Rajasthani painting style and Pahari painting style. Rajasthani painting style can be seen in Mewar, Bukner, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer and Buni. Pahari painting style can be seen in Khasoli, Jammu and Garhwal. Like this, Rajputs have a special place in the history of India. Now we'll come to the arrival of Turks. By defeating the small kingdoms of Rajput kings, Turks built their empire in the subsequent years. The establishment of Turks rule, whose religion was Islam, was not completely unexpected. Arabs had made failed attempts to capture Sindh region from the beginning of 8th century. Still, Sindh region was always under the constant threat of Turks attack. Turks belong to a nomadic tribe of Mongolia, a part of Central Asia, who had accepted Islam. Alaptujin, who belonged to this tribe, established his independent state in 963 CE in Ghazni, region of Afghanistan. The battles between Turks and Rajput started from this period. So first we'll know about Muhammad Ghazni. Ghazni ascended throne after Alaptujin in 999 CE. Muhammad Ghazni invaded India 17 times. The famous Somanatha temple and the temples of Saurashtra were destroyed during his invasions. Though all the Rajput kingdoms of the western India were battered by these invasions, they failed to face Turks with unity. Muhammad succeeded in his invasions due to the political and the military weakness of Rajputs. Muhammad invaded 17 times and carried away enormous amount of golden ornaments and wealth to Ghazni. Though he did not build empire in India, his invasions showed the way to future Turks invasion in India. Similarly, The valor of Rajputs who had become weak in the internal rivalries also got displayed. Now let's know about Muhammad Ghori. A Turk dynasty of Shams Bani of Ghor region of Afghanistan came to prominence and ended the rule of Ghazni dynasty. Ghiyazuddin Muhammad Ghor of this dynasty ascended the throne. He sent his younger brother Mujahideen Muhammad to establish Turk rule in India. He is called as Muhammad Ghor by the historians. He started his first invasion by besieging Multan. He wanted to recapture the places of Sindh that were under the rule of Muhammad Ghazni. He invaded Anilwar, Anilwada of Gujarat and got defeated there. This defeat made Muhammad to change his plan and he attacked Peshawar and conquered it. Then Khusro Malik of Lahore surrendered by keeping Lahore as his center Muhammad attacked the plains of India this attack was naturally resisted by the ruler of Delhi Prithviraj Chauhan III he defeated Muhammad at Tarain in 1191 CE Muhammad returned to Gor and again faced Prithviraj Chauhan III at the second battle of Tarain in 1192 CE this time he had made a lot of preparations in this battle the archers of turks succeeded the quicker cavalry of turks dispersed the rajput army with slow moving elephants govinda rao and bhola who were instrumental in the rajput victory during first tarain battle were killed prithviraj chauhan was imprisoned Prithviraj continued to rule for a while after his surrender. Muhammad appointed his slaves to take care of the areas won by him in India. He got murdered on his way back to Gori. Now let's know the political implications of Turks. 
द विक्टरी ऑफ कोरिस हैड मेड मेजर पोलिटिकल इम्प्लीकेशन द पोलिटिकल सिस्टम कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ स्मॉल किंगडम्स वैनिश्ड अ सेंट्रलाइज रूल ऑफ सुल्तान हु हैड इमेंस पावर एट दिल्ली केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस एज अ रिजल्ट द एंटायर नॉर्थर्न इंडिया केम अंडर वन रूल आफ्टर हर्षा The system of administration was different from Rajputs. The Sultan had the absolute power of either appointing or dismissing all officials. The military administration was also clearly unlike the previous one. Soldiers were appointed directly by the Sultans. Soldiers remained loyal directly to the Sultan himself. With the establishment of the rule of Sultans India got reconnected with the outer world which had remained cut off from 8th century onwards this was all about the rajput dynasties that ruled north india before the arrival of the turks and because of the disunity among the rajputs it created opportunity for the turks to arrive as we have learned to know the future developments of the north india stay tuned keep learning thanks for watching